At 8 a.m. on December the 7th, 1941, hundreds of Japanese aircraft swarmed over Pearl Harbor Naval Base, launching a fierce and unprovoked attack on American warships filled with sailors. 2,400 people died. Over on my right, I saw the Arizona going down and the California and Oklahoma and West Virginia and all that battleship row. Uh, billowing clouds of smoke and fire and, and bodies floating in the water. Now, three quarters of a century later, a group of more than a hundred survivors has gathered for probably the final time in such numbers to attend a series of remembrance ceremonies at the site. Here in Washington, D.C., curators at the museum are using virtual reality technology to help the next generation to experience the events that led to America's entry into the Second World War. It, like some things the teacher can't explain, I could just look around and see like what was happening. Later this month, Prime Minister Shinzo Abe will become the first Japanese leader to visit the Pearl Harbor Memorial site alongside President Obama who earlier this year visited the memorial to the U.S. nuclear attack at Hiroshima, which effectively ended the war in the Pacific. Abe will call for full reconciliation, but won't offer an apology at Pearl Harbor. Some historians say Japan has never fully accepted responsibility for atrocities committed during the war. It's a view shared by China's government. The Japanese should correct their attitude on history, give a correct understanding of the crimes committed by the Japanese militarists, and take practical actions to gain the trust of people in countries in Asia that suffered from the war, including China. This is very important. Historians have also been gathering here in the U.S. Capitol to discuss the broader context of Pearl Harbor, emphasizing that there were also simultaneous surprise attacks by Imperial Japan across the Asia-Pacific. Daniel Wrenches, Washington.